Welcome back to the couch. I'm Dez. And I'm Jay. And this is our Batman vs. Superman review. Coming up next. Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice is a 2016 superhero film directed by Zack Snyder. It's the follow-up to Man of Steel which kicked off the current DCEU movie franchise. It was written by Chris Terrio and David S. Goyer and stars Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, Jeremy Irons, and Gal Gadot. BVS is the first live-action film to feature Batman and Superman together, as well as the first cinematic portrayal of Wonder Woman. In the film, criminal mastermind Lex Luthor manipulates Batman into a preemptive battle with Superman, who Luthor is obsessed with defeating. BBS translates some very famous DC comics to the big screen, most notably the death of Superman and Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. All right, we're back and we're going to be reviewing the ultimate cut of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. So we start out with the destruction and the aftermath of what was going on at the end of Man of Steel with the fight between Superman and Zod. And although, as we've discussed before, Man of Steel 2 really is what should have been the next film, yeah, but definitely. if this was the way it had to go, if this was the only way it was going to happen, BVS is the next film, I actually thought it was a pretty genius way of them to incorporate Batman and bring Bruce Wayne into the Man of Steel story, and if it had to go the way it went. Yeah, I'm just, just kind of resentful that it had to go the way that it went. I yeah. wanted Man of Steel 2 real bad. This is two films, I think, that are directly impacted by there not being a Man of Steel 2. I mean, you can argue, yeah, of course, it kind of trickled out and the whole franchise is suffering because there's no Man of Steel mm -hmm. yeah, 2. But great. Man of Steel itself, I feel, is not looked at as highly as it should have been because mm -hmm. we didn't get to continue that story. I agree with that. And then Batman vs. Superman, we're expected to understand and just believe and know that Superman is who we wanted him to be. Which, I mean, granted, I can get that far in my imagination, but it doesn't change the fact that we needed to see it for anything in BVS that was meant to have a big impact on yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. It didn't have the same impact it would have. So we start off with the death of Batman's parents, which for me I thought was a little redundant. I didn't necessarily feel like I needed to see that again. I don't know. What you think about that? Zack Snyder just expects you to know a lot about the comics going in. Yeah. Like, he expects you to know who Doomsday is and things like that. So I find it really odd that we have to show the death of Batman's parents again mm -hmm. because then the rest of the movie is set up to like you should just know that this is Batman's background and Superman's history and things right. like that. Ironically, I think that that's the scene that I would prefer if you would just uh, assume that the audience knew that. When yeah. There are several other scenes moving forward. I wish you would have told specifically the way that you told the opening scenes of More Batman's detail. parents' death, the same detail, yeah. exactly. They should have done what Spider-Man Homecoming ended up doing, where they just kind of pass over it. Let the audience know, yep, that happened, we're moving on now. Yeah, just acknowledge yeah, it. Yeah, I think that that's probably the way they should have gone. You know, that's a, that's a good comparison. That's a good example of what they should have done. And it just goes on a little too long. As, as much as we both tend to like Snyder's stuff, it's like the, the slow motion with the pearls and the gun. and it, It's just too much. Yeah. It's, it, it's too much. Yeah. Let's just move on. We right. got it. Let's yeah. go. I'm thinking that we probably could have skipped to the very next scene and just started the movie where it says um, 18 months earlier, Affleck is watching all the destruction between Zod and Superman going back and forth. Yeah. One thing that came to mind, and maybe you got a, better, a good explanation for this, but I thought it like, puzzled me a little bit. Like, why, if, if Bruce Wayne is interested in saving lives during all that destruction, then why didn't Batman show up? Why would Bruce Wayne show up and not Batman if you're really interested in saving lives? Since this is an older Batman and he's in the city being Bruce Wayne, he's there on Bruce Wayne business, and I, I don't necessarily even know if he had any of the bat tech with him or anything. I just got the impression that he wasn't being Batman like 100% of the time like he had been in the past by mm. this point. But it is not in the film. Yeah. So it's my assumption. It but doesn't, your explanation yeah. would make sense. I get that. And that's the problem. Like, I, we're not, that is not established about Batman that he's kind of semi-retired. I don't mm -hmm. really do this anymore. I'm kind of going off in the sunset kind of thing. So, yeah. It was just kind of left open-ended that way. Yeah, and I think that explains, in part at least, why Batman becomes so unhinged or is so unhinged at this point once the Superman stuff happens. And when Superman appears and he realizes he's got to up his game, it's like he gets back into the game of being Batman but it's much more to an extreme to where we see Alfred is trying to warn him, you're crossing the line and I'm trying to tell you you're taking things too far. So I think that feeds into that unhinged Batman. He's actually, you know, branding people and he's got machine guns and whatever else. And that Batman has existed before. This isn't a new, there's precedent for this type of Batman. 
but it assumes you know that going into the film. I kind of fall into that camp to where like, huh, what, why, what? If you don't know the Frank Miller Batman, if you if you don't know that really, really gritty, dark Batman, mm -hmm. then this is going to be a shock, even after seeing the dark, like, realistic take that Nolan had on it. The right? last time most audience members saw Batman on film wasn't that guy that you're talking about right yeah. now. You could say, at the very least, Affleck's Batman probably went on very similar adventures as Nolan's, or at least would have maybe behaved the same way as mm -hmm. Nolan's Batman. I can see that. This could be Nolan's Batman easily yeah. 20 years down the line or whatever. Towards the beginning of the film, we're pretty much brought right into the Lois and Clark relationship and where it stands now 18 months later. And what are your thoughts on Lois Clark? You know, I didn't like that we already come into this film with Lois and Clark established as an item. I kind of think we needed to see that in a separate film. We kind of keep going back to we needed a Man of Steel too. That's part of the arc that we needed to see mm -hmm. not I, I i didn't like that they went straight into that i'm fine that it's 18 months later and maybe they're more serious now but mm -hmm. it, it implied pretty heavily that they're living together or at least they're very intimate with each other every day like the intimate meaning just in a relationship like they see each other every day all the time they're yeah they were in a bathtub involved. scene yeah and then there's the bathtub yeah, and the bathtub scene I, i'm no prude but i thought it was extremely unnecessary it's just like yeah why this That could long? have been a phone call. Yeah. I guess the one thing that it does set up that's kind of fun is when he jumps into the tub fully clothed with her, you know, and kisses her and they laugh and whatever. I mean, that's cool, I guess, to yeah. show that they're close. and it's and cool. They can, Unnecessary. Yeah, though. but they can goof around. That's fun, I guess. But yeah, I just felt, it felt very forced and we're missing a whole movie. There. Yeah. Uh, but since we brought up Lois, I would like to say, because in the Man of Steel review we did, I was kind of like, yeah, there's some stuff missing from Lois's personality mm -hmm. for me. And I felt like we got Lois back in this one. I think she was stronger as Lois in this film than in this Yeah, film. I agree. I think she was written a lot better in this one. Yeah, she feels like she's doing things because she, the character, is figuring these things out. Mm -hmm. There's a question that's asked in this film that I think is really cool. They ask, what should Superman do? Like, what is his responsibility? What should he be doing mm -hmm. with all these powers? And I think it's a great question, but it definitely would have been more impactful, more powerful to the audience. I feel like I'm repeating myself a million times here. Had we had a Man of Steel too, I mean, we didn't get to actually see Superman being all these things that they keep referring to. Yeah. And I think that really hurts the film and it really hurts the franchise of the DC films overall. Superman this time around, what are your thoughts on Superman in this film versus how he was in Man of Steel. Well, in Man of Steel, I thought it was more of a coming of age tale where he's really trying to find himself. This Superman seems a little more darker, more grittier, a little more, uh, I don't know, just, I don't know if I liked him. This line really bothered me. When Batman and Superman first face off, like face to face for mm -hmm. real, um, and the do you bleed line comes up, which I love. Tell me. In that exchange, what I didn't like was Superman says, The bat is dead. Bury it. Consider this mercy. And I thought, consider it mercy, does that mean you, Superman would have killed him? And so he's showing him mercy by not? It just didn't make any sense. I'm like, what mercy are you showing him from what? I can't remember if Clark had been investigating the Gotham Bat before they, we got to that scene or not. If he was, he may have gotten worked up over some of the things that he discovered. And when they finally met up, he may have, I don't know, could have just been the last straw for him. That could be one possible yeah. explanation, possibly. But no, I, I mostly agree with your point that, uh, yeah, that was kind of mercy. What are you talking yeah. about? The Man of Steel Superman is almost a different character than the one we get in BVS, but it's that Man of Steel 2 thing again. Yep. If we would have had Man of Steel 2, then I think we could have had the Superman almost, not entirely how he was in BVS, but almost exactly as he was, because we would have been able to see him fall from that hopeful place. Right, the Man of Steel sequel could have been the bridge between those two characters you're describing. Yeah. yeah. We didn't get a bridge. I still really love Cavill playing Superman. Like I want him to be Superman, I just want him to be written better in the future. Hey, so I thought we'd take a quick break and talk about our Featured Friends. Hell yeah, let's do it. Featured Friends are other content creators we enjoy and support. And we think you'll dig them too. All right, so let's check out our Featured Friend. Imbued with the power of the Odin Force, ready to drop the Mjolnir on unsuspecting mortals. Make way for the mighty Allfather himself. Are you ready for Odin's Movie Blog, an entertaining, straightforward channel that brings you box office breakdowns, movie reviews, pop culture commentary, live chats and group movie nights. So go visit Odin 
the critic who's a cynic. And don't forget to tell him those two bald guys sent you. And we're back! So let's talk about Lex. What are your thoughts on uh, Eisenberg's Lex and then just Lex in this film in general, I guess? Well, Lex, the quirky type Lex, I, I didn't care for... Now, let me let me just say this. I do like Jesse Eisenberg as an actor. He's a fine actor. I don't particularly care for his choice of portrayal of this Lex Luthor character very much. I didn't, it just didn't fit to me. I mean, there are a lot of scenes where the score had this trembling, menacing type of music to go along with scenes, or shots that had Eisenberg in it, and it just didn't match to me the, the way that Eisenberg was portraying that character that it just didn't sync up. He seemed more to me like a spoiled rich kid. It's those mannerisms he throws out and the little, like he does that little, I don't, I can't even do it, but he does that little tit tit tit. <laughs> no, I, um, no, what am I? I, what was I saying? No, and um. <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah. wrong. No, I agree. I don't think that this Lex is very intimidating. He's a little crazy and off-putting and like, I don't know what this guy's gonna do, but I don't know if he's intimidating. Like, I, I think this guy's gonna really harm me. The thing I didn't like about Lex the most wasn't necessarily Eisenberg's portrayal of it, it was probably the way he was written. I had no idea why he was so pissed at Superman. What, what was his motivation, to? you know? I understand the humanity versus God. I get thematically why, but the actual motivation is pretty muddled in the story somewhere. Yeah, I think that's what makes him come off as a spoiled rich kid to me. Things aren't the way that I think they should be, so wham. That's the way he comes across to me. And I'm fine with that in respect to it being in its own way a Lex Luthor begins, because by the end of the movie, he's got the shaved head and he looks the Lex part and stuff. Um, so I would assume from that, the plan would have been to make him more Lex from that point on, the mm -hmm. Lex we know, but it's still off-putting. I still yeah. just don't like it. A lot of the things Lex Luthor did were kind of behind the scenes. We didn't really get to figure that out until towards the end of the film that, that Lex was really the puppet master and he was manipulating mainly Batman to use him as his, his pawn to do his dirty work, right? So tell me a little bit about Batman and, and the way you felt about his portrayal in this film. I love the gun-toting Batman. That's not gonna be a popular opinion, but it's from the comics. To me, there's precedent for it. The Frank Miller Batman especially, very disgruntled. He's in that semi-retirement um, stage. He's very, very jaded about the world. He's very, very within himself in his own little bubble. Thinks he knows what's right for the world now because he's been so, in a way, corrupted by all of his fighting crime throughout the years. So I thought that really came through. I don't know if that comes through if you don't know that history of Batman, but for someone like me who loves that Batman, that very brutal, very cruel Batman, I. I was in heaven. I just thought the gun toting, the machine guns, the, you know, actually killing people, to me, it wouldn't have made sense in the Nolan films. I don't think it would have been appropriate at that stage in Batman's career, but at this stage where we're at 20 years in the future from Nolan-ish era, you know, perfect. We also get some of the most iconic and best Batman action in this. Uh, Agreed. That stuff about Batman toting guns, I think definitely can be off-putting to someone who isn't as well-versed in the comics. And even though I'm in that camp, I still like the gun-toting Batman. But I'm gonna slightly disagree with you on the Nolan aspect because you said you didn't think it really fit in that world. I think it actually does. Mainly because in that particular world, there was a point where the theme became about escalation. At a certain point, the Batman's gonna turn into some gun-toting thug because he's gonna get pushed to his limit and Superman was that limit when he showed up. So I think if Superman had showed up in the Nolan universe, then yeah, it would have made perfect sense to me. If we were to just argue for a second that yeah. the Nolan Batman's the same one, then yeah, it makes perfect sense leading right into this. What I'm saying is though, I meant at that time in Batman's career, like the, and Batman begins, if Batman would have had a gun, I would have been like, well, this isn't Batman. Yeah. But yeah, 20 years in the future, machine gun Batman, I'm down. I, yeah. I'm totally down with that. Yeah. So and we're saying the same thing, just totally two totally <laughs> Probably, different ways. So yeah. yeah. One thing for this story, though, I do want to point out about Batman killing is in this story, it is necessary because otherwise what happens is you go from thinking your Batman is someone that has this mantra of I don't kill. And then as soon as he sees Superman causing destruction in the city, he's willing to kill this alien, yeah. even though he knows nothing more about him. And that is a real, real hefty on and off switch. Yeah, for, it's like zero to 200. And it wouldn't work unless we show him starting to like, okay, now I'm becoming unhinged, I'm branding people, then I'm actually killing people. There is an escalation of assuming it's the Batman we know that won't kill at the beginning to the one that will kill Superman when he sees it. I like my Batman dark and gritty and brutal, so if he's 
slamming people up against walls and bashing their heads and blood's going there. I'm fine with that, Batman, in the right story context. Yeah. And that's what I think we're getting here. But the action that we get, especially that scene when Batman goes to rescue Martha, that's like probably one of my favorite scenes in the entire film, really. There's another controversial scene in there with Batman, um, the dream sequence. Kim, what's your take on the dream sequence? I actually really love the dark side portion in the desert and... Yeah. It's kind of showing the dream of the future where if Superman loses Lois, you know, he's he's going to become psycho most likely and, you know, who's going to stop him. I like all that. I like the way it's shot. I, I like the mood. I don't know if it was 100% necessary to show in this film, though. And I think it becomes really confusing when Flash shows up from the future. And then on top of that, the first time I saw it, I mean... I know the comics pretty well. I'm not an avid comic reader, but I know them well enough. I know who Flash is. I know he can time travel. I had no idea that was Flash the first time I saw it. And it was just a really confusing, like, who is that? And that's actually the first time we've even seen Flash on film. Ever. So, yeah. Right. So, you know, you know who the hell this guy is at all. You right. see, like, a... Is he a part of the original dream sequence? It could have been one of a million things. It wasn't really clear at all. It could have worked if we'd have introduced uh, Flash a little bit earlier in the film, just in a different capacity, just to establish that... Flash is in this universe, and then maybe it would have made a little bit more sense. But ultimately, I agree with what you're saying. It, it was kind of muddled. It kind of didn't necessarily need to be there. Yeah, maybe if we swapped out the Batman's parents' footage being killed at the beginning, I'd have been okay with something with, that. with the Flash, maybe yeah. in the future preparing, like he has to go back to warn Batman about Superman, something like that at the beginning. Then when he shows up later, we can put two and two together. Oh, that's the Flash coming back from the future. All right, so we can't talk about Batman without talking about another major Batman character that's in this film, Alfred Pennyworth. Uh, what are your thoughts on Alfred? Oh, you know what? I actually love Jeremy Irons as Alfred, but I prefer my Alfred to be more of the mentor. And, and in this world, he was a he was kind of like a tech develop a tech developer for Batman. That, he, that was kind of off-putting for he's me. He's kind of taken on the Lucius Fox role. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. My assumption is that that Alfred happened, but mm -hmm. at this stage in the game, he's no longer... Like, like for instance, he's trying to warn Bruce that he's becoming too cruel, and we have that great speech. That's how it starts. The fever, the rage, the feeling of powerlessness that turns good men cruel. He's trying to warn Bruce, like, you don't see what you're turning into and where this all leads, and I do, and I'm trying. So he, he can't be the mentor because Bruce doesn't want to listen to him anymore. There is precedent in the comics that in the last couple decades where Alfred has a military background and he actually is very uh, good at fighting. He can defend himself. Yeah. But that's the Alfred we're getting. It's, we're getting that it, Alfred, it, it, more see, modern. See, that's the thing for me. It was like I did not know that version of Alfred existed in the comics. Mm -hmm. I prefer the more mentoring, or like the Al more traditional yeah. Alfred yeah. as to, you know, basically, yeah, I can fix anything. I'll, I'll build you a new bat ship if you need it. That kind of, I didn't really care for that. That version of Alfred was never once betrayed on film, ever. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think so. It. The only time we've even seen it again is on the Gotham TV show and live action at all, period. Right. One major character we haven't touched on yet, we get the introduction of Wonder Woman on the big screen, actually, first yeah. time ever, which that is really, really cool. cool. So yeah, thoughts on Wonder Woman? You know, that was probably my favorite scene of the whole movie when Wonder Woman comes in to say Batman's bacon from Doomsday. That was probably my favorite. The music, the moment, everything, the CGI, everything about it was just awesome to me. I love it. I can replay it in my head a million times and I'll never get old to me. I really love that scene. Wonder Woman herself was great too. Yeah, I think Gal Gadot's portrayal of Wonder Woman is actually pretty good. She doesn't have much to do in this film. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when she arrives, and we get a really great, quick, uh, lighter moment that I think we need. This thing is from another world. My world. I've killed things from other worlds before. Is she with you? I thought she was with you. And I love when she steps in, and then that theme, I love the yes. Wonder Woman theme. Um, knowing what goes on in her film later, I think helps me with the fact that she doesn't have as much to do in this film. Okay, so let's get into the motives. We do get, I think, some good motives and then also some cloudy motives as to why this fight is happening. Mm -hmm. I think Batman's motives are very clear and very well established and very well done. And that's essentially he sees that this is an alien threat, that he may be capable of doing all this good, but he's just as capable, if not more, of doing destruction and evil and all this other stuff. So is that risk worth Superman even existing? So that that works, especially at the point that Batman Bruce Wayne is at in his life. This all works very well for me. 
I think we get a little more cloudy when we get into Lex's motive yeah. and Superman's motive. There, There is a moment where Lex is explaining why Superman needs to go fight the Batman. And I think Superman's motive within the context of that moment makes sense. But why exactly does Lex hate Superman so much? Yes. Other than maybe the same reasons that Batman kind of has problems with him. But I don't feel that's in the film explicitly enough. Well, I don't think it's in there think? at all. What Lex's motivations are for hating Superman. I don't think I see very, very, a lot of it is just open for interpretation, but I don't think they actually showed you at any point in the movie that this is the reason why he hates this guy. Even if you know the comics, oh, that's Lex Luthor, he hates Superman. But this is the first new Lex we've seen in a right. while. We need to, yeah, we, why? So I think that's missing, and that's a major flaw of this film. So that brings us into the actual showdown, and Batman's got his, you know, anti-Superman armor on and all that stuff. And I think the fight was actually really cool, really well done, yeah. really well choreographed. My first problem with it, though, is that I don't think enough time, if really any, is spent on Superman trying to appeal to Batman's humanity and debate and or you know explain to him the situation. Batman just gives him no... Yeah, he gave up real quick. He tries one time, and then after that, he's like, okay, I guess I'm just going to fight this guy. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. Bruce, please. I was wrong. You have to listen to me. Lex wants a... At this point in the film, Superman doesn't even know kryptonite exists. That kryptonite's right. even point. a thing. So if if you're Superman, there's, you're thinking you're invincible, there's nothing that could potentially hurt you. So that means that Batman could give you his best shot. Whatever he wants to try, whatever tactic, whatever method he's going to throw at you, shouldn't, shouldn't matter if you're Superman because I got this. So you should be more willing to try to get him to listen to your point of view. One of my favorite scenes in that whole fight was when uh, Superman was weakened by the kryptonite and Batman's just, you know, giving him the, the right cross. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden it just wasn't working anymore and he yeah. just kind of started good. looking at him. That was a great Yeah, his powers me. gradually yeah, come back. Yeah, yeah, he's starting yeah. to come out of it, you know? Yeah, that, that was, that really was cool. good. We get to that point where, with the Martha incident. You're letting him kill Martha. What does that mean? Why did you say that name? Why did you say that name? Martha, why did you say that name? It's his mother's name. I like the moment a lot. It makes a lot of sense to me. For me, what's happening is he gets snapped out of his bubble. So he has been in this state where even Alfred can't shake him out of what he's becoming. Mm -hmm. And so he's just tunnel vision, don't care what's happening to anybody else, I'm killing this guy. And when Superman brings up the word Martha, then it snaps him out of that bubble. Enough to where now he's willing to listen a little bit where he wasn't at all before. And I think that part works, but would Superman have said you're killing Martha or whatever he says? No, he would have said you're killing my mom right. or you're you're allowing my mom to die. You're doing this and this is killing mm -hmm. my mother. It's for the audience. Yeah. It's not for Batman. It's yeah. for, hey, remember Martha? I'm mm -hmm. telling you. So I get that that part is horribly handled. But I love the idea of realizing this guy isn't everything that I made him be. Like I picked one thing about him and now that's all he is. And so... This is making him realize he's got a family, he's got a mother, there's more to this guy than I realized. So it snaps him out of it just long enough to realize Alfred was probably right. He's, he's become a monster. Right. He's, now he's seeing himself in the mirror. But I understand why people don't like it. So what, what, where do you land? Well, I, I don't like it because, I mean, <laughs> it didn't really change much for me. I mean, the fact that you stop to listen to him and he's just a guy who's got a family and a mother and all these things doesn't change the fact that he's an alien from another planet that can burn the whole place down should he get pissed off or if someone hurts Lois or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't change any of that to me. So I, I get what they were trying to do, but it just didn't work for me for that reason. If I'm Batman, that's not going to stop me from killing him. The whole reason for Batman killing Superman is a good thing in his eyes. Right. So that wouldn't change it in my mind. But I still don't know necessarily. Wait, if wait, 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 hold on. You hear that? Oh, forget to hear that. You smell that? An episode of On the Couch would not be complete without a visit from the least talented man in the entire universe. Yeah, no kidding. Where kills come, where kills come. Where kills come, where kills come. So what's up, guys? Any news on that album release? 
Don't you what's up me, Baldy? Whoa, why the attitude? You're more fired up than usual. Wait, so you have no idea why he's so worked up, huh? Let me refresh your memory. That's not Superman. You it know is what not. I mean? It is Superman not. Superman doesn't kill Zod. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what do you mean Superman doesn't kill Zod? H hold on. Explain this then. You see that? No? Well, let me slow it down for you. Oh, I know you saw it that time. You ever swipe me off screen again and you will regret it. The only reason I let it go before is we were late for a gig. All right, we'll be careful. You'll be dead. And don't you worry about our album, pal. When it comes out, it's going to be the mother of all albums. Yeah, way better than anything Led Zeppelin ever did. Hey. Yeah, and speaking of mothers, you two are way off on this whole Martha thing. Everyone in the universe agrees it's totally stupid. Well, not everyone. I thought it was great. It was a very moving moment in the film for me. Yeah, I liked it too. So you agree with this idiot? What? You agree with that, you hypocrite? Whatever you're smoking, smoke less. You know what? I'm sick of your shit. I'm gonna strangle you with your own guitar strings if you don't watch your freaking mouth. You can't talk to me that way. Looks like I just did and you're not gonna do a thing about it. Oh yeah, bring it on. Now you're gonna get it. They don't call me kill for nothing. Dude, give me a break. Your real name is Dudley. No one calls you kill but me. How dare you? Kill, kill versus, versus skunk. skunk. You gotta do, bro. Yeah. 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 Hi, mom. Hi, Mrs. Kill. Oh yeah, that'd be great. Thanks so much. I. Wait. No. No. Not. Come on, mom. Not right now. I'm right. Yes. I love you, base the sky and twice as high. Yes. I love you. Okay. Yes. So what's up? Uh, your mom is at my mom's house, and they want us to. Oh. I should have thought this through. They want, they want us to, um... They want us to what? They want us to come home for dinner. Right now. Like, they want us to come home. Now. Oh, sweet. I'm starving. What is it, beef stroganoff? You know, I'd be good with a grilled cheese sandwich, You know too. what? We've got to go, but we'll be back. As always, farewell, couch dwellers. <laughs> where it kills come, where it kills come. Where it kills come, where it wow. I have no words. Well, they do love their mommies, you know. That's something. Yeah, but let's get back to our review. Yikes. All right, so while this battle is ensuing, we have Lex essentially creating Doomsday. What are your thoughts on Doomsday? This film didn't really need it. If you don't know the whole history between Doomsday and Superman and the death of Superman, none of this is like, okay, it's a big, weird alien creature. Why do I mm -hmm. care about this just thing? just made a big monster. Yeah, it's a big monster. Yeah. Who cares? It could have ended with not. that fight between Batman and Superman. It would have been just fine, in yes. my opinion. It could have almost been the same film, just massage the ending up a bit, get rid of the Doomsday stuff, right. bring Wonder Woman into it. I, I get that was a, re a reason to bring Wonder Woman into it, but... It didn't need to be the reason. One thing that was a little disappointing for me was when they hit him with the nuke and he got some of that uh, extra bone and structure. The spikes there. And all the spikes stuff, and yeah. all that. You know, I was kind of hoping we'd get that rock beard that he had. Oh, yeah, we didn't get the we rock beard. Yeah, I, that, yeah, that was a little disappointing. I thought yeah. that would have been a really cool moment. Didn't get it. The execution of what they're trying to do is actually fine. It's the, it's the fact that they're trying to put it all into this one movie. It just shouldn't have been... Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mind muddled, what they convoluted. did. It's just too much. Yeah, it's too much. Yeah, way too much. Wonder Woman's now shown up. Yeah. We get the cool moment of exchange between the three characters. It's so great to see 
these three characters in the same frame for the first yeah, time. Yeah. This is Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Yeah. I mean, this is the holy grail trinity of, you know, of comics. So very cool to see them. We both love the Man of Steel ending. I think yeah. it's a perfect ending. So I don't want to hold this ending up to the same standard. Kind of hard not to. But one thing that's interesting about this ending, though, it ends on a note where our heroes didn't necessarily win the day mm -hmm. and the future is just kind of scattered in front of them where it could go anywhere. Yeah. I definitely applaud that kind of ending and it gives you that tiny bit of, oh, Superman's coming back because you just, I mean, you literally get a split second of you think you saw the dirt rise, but you may not. Yeah, yeah, in exactly. The credits roll. So in that way, it really succeeds very well. Uh, but yeah, hard not to compare because the Man of Steel ending is just so beautiful. But. Yeah, it's a definitely a tough act to follow. This film mostly would have been fine had we had that Man of Steel in between. The main points of it, at the very least, were fine. Yeah. With a few nuanced tweaks here and there along the way. But yeah, I think if you'd add that Superman to, everything would have fit, fit into the puzzle perfectly. So I think we're ready to sum up. Des, what'd you think of Batman versus Superman? Okay, Batman versus Superman is a film I really enjoy. There's a lot of great things to like in this film. There are some nitpicky things in there and, and a few things that I have genuine problems with. But overall, all things considered, I believe that this film deserves 3.5 shiny bald heads. What say you? Batman vs. Superman is a very ambitious film. Uh, most of its problems, though, I think come from the real world. We've got a lot of restrictions and mandates being put on Zack Snyder and his crew for this film by Warner Brothers as they rapidly try to catch up to Marvel. And I think that really does this film a disservice and all those involved in making it, unfortunately. But there is a lot to like, especially if you like your Batman really dark and gritty and kind of out of his mind. You'll at the very least enjoy the Batman portions of this film. And I would also give it three and a half out of five shiny bald heads. That was it for our Batman vs. Superman review. We really hope you enjoyed it. And with Aquaman just around the corner, we're going to continue doing the DCEU films. So our next review will be for the director's cut of Suicide Squad. So what do we say, Des? Join us next time, right here on this couch. Last time on the couch, we reviewed Man of Steel. So if you missed it, now's a great time to check it out. If you enjoy what we're doing, please hit that like button and subscribe. To receive alerts when new videos are posted, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thanks, we really appreciate you.